Hello, welcome to our QC Tips and Tricks webinar. Uh, let's just see if more participants come in. We are around about 40 participants at the moment. And uh, this uh, webinar will be in English today because we have uh, participants from several countries. I'm uh, Brian, and I'm product specialist within TUC and molecular spectroscopy uh, here in Denmark. And um, I have around about 18 years of experience with TUC analysis. So our program today will be a short introduction to TUC, the instruments and the, the determination methods. We with look at the standardizations, we will look at standards and sample preparation, and uh, how to conserve and storage the sample, and which effect the environmental can give on the results. And uh, we will also have a look at, uh, at um, peak shapes, uh, when using which kind of catalyst, and how the catalyst should be packed and uh, yeah, there's much more to learn about TUC analysis. We will also introduce you to that. And then we have a question and answering session by the end. First, I will do a short introduction of our TUC analysis program. So it's TUCL, uh, a laboratory combustion system, which already was introduced back in 2011. This uh, combustion system have a span from zero to 30,000 milligram per liter. So from the high purified water to the polluted water uh, as wastewater and can be supplied with a total nitrogen detector and as well as solid sample module. Beside of that, we can also supply the instrument with different kinds of auto samplers. The TUC 4200 was introduced back in 2012 and is an online TUC analyzer, which is more or less the same as the TOC L, but uh, this can be installed in, for instance, wastewater, tre wastewater treatment plants. So we are able to have several streams into the analyzer. The newest part we have is the ETOC 1000. This is an online TUC analyzer as well. And the, the oxidization principle of this instrument is done by UV oxidization. And the detector is a conductivity sensor. This is most suitable for highly purified water as water for injection and purified water for the pharmaceutical industry or even for the semiconductor industry. Last but not least, we also have the TOC VW, which is a wet chemical uh, oxidization system and also oxidizing with UV light as well. And this system is mostly uh, for high purified water analysis. Some of you might also have a TUV, TU, TUCB as a CPH model, which are the former unit of the TOCL. So most of you probably know that uh, with the TUC analyzers, we are able to analyze to total organic carbon. We can analyze total carbon, inorganic carbon. We can also analyze the non-purgeable organic carbon or also called the volatile organic carbon or non-volatile organic carbon. Our instruments can also be supplied with a total nitrogen detector. So, as you see here, uh, Wikipedia state that approximately 40 million organic compounds are existing 
and uh, this number is probably growing and uh, this is a huge number and uh, we detect all of them with our TOC analyzers. That's the reason why we called calling this a kind a sum parameter. As I said, we are able to detect uh, total carbon, total organic carbon, inorganic carbon, and as well the non purgeable organic carbon and the purgeable organic carbon and total nitrogen. The purgeable organic carbon is not a standard measurement function in our instruments. This can be added to your system and is mostly used for environmental analysis. When you analyze the total bounded uh, nitrogen, it is done with the, uh, simultaneously with the, the other uh, analysis. So these two detectors for the carbon and the nitrogen, they are in series. The TUC, the total organic carbon, can be analyzed in different ways. What we see here in Denmark is mostly the NQC uh, or the direct measurements which are used here. And this is mainly because we, our customers are measuring pure water as drinking water or water for injections. But if you go to the environmental, typically customers are using the dif difference method where we analyze the total carbon and the inorganic carbon. And from that, we and these values we subtract from each other. A few number of customers are using the addition method. And uh, here we analyze both the PUC and the NPUC values. And when we're uh, adding these values to, uh, together, we get the total organic carbon. So, when using the difference method, we do two measurements, and this will also, there will be a need for you also to have two different kinds of calibrations. You have to calibrate for the total carbon, and you have to calibrate the inorganic carbon. When measuring the TC minus IC, it's mandatory that the total organic carbon value have to be higher than the inorganic carbon. And this analysis can also be used uh, even though if the sample uh, contains volatile or perchable organic carbon. The method cannot be used if the inorganic carbon is too high. The reason for that is that the catalyst uh, performance will decrease. And this is mainly if your IC content is higher than 5 to 10 milligram per liter. For the addition measure, the PUC plus NPUC, we also need two calibrations, one for each uh, measurement, and it, and it takes also two measurements to, to do this analysis. And uh, here we also can see that the, this analysis has to be used if IC content is too high and the sample contains volatile organic carbon. So the NPOC or the analysis for non-volatile organic carbon only takes one calibration curve and one measurement. So it's fast and easy to do there is, uh, the instrument will do a sample preparation for you. It will add acids and it will spot the sample and uh, remove the IC content completely. The acidification needs to be, be uh, less than pH 2. Otherwise, you do not convert all the inorganic carbon and, and then it's not possible to sparge out 
this inner band organic part. So if you do not do a proper sample pretreatment, you will measure a false high value of NPOC. The NPOC measurements also have some limitations. So for instance, if you have samples which create foam, it can be difficult to use the NPOC measurements because we sparge the sample with, with, the, with the air. Another thing which could cause problems with the NPOC analysis is if the acidification cause coagulation or sedimentation of organic com compounds. Then you have to use the difference methods. So measure the TUC by the differential method as TC minus IC. So when we do the NPOC measurement, the instrument takes in the sample in the syringe of the instrument. It do the acidification and convert the IC to CO2 by sparging the air through the sample. And then it injects the sample and the analysis of the oxidized organic compounds uh, will be detected as CO2 in our detector. And when we measure the IC, we do an acidification of the sample, and then we convert the inorganic compounds to CO2, and then we analyze the CO2. The total nitrogen detector is mostly used within the environmental samples and wastewater analysis. What we have seen in the past years is that the pharmaceutical companies also are interested in the total nitrogen detector because this can be attractive within cleaning validation applications. So they can see if any proteins are in the final rinse water or on the equipment they have used in the production so we can analyze it via swap method. Another application for the total nitrogen detector um, in the pharmaceutical could also be to analyze or determine the protein content of a vaccine, which are very interesting because then we can use this method instead of using the Kjeldahl analysis, which cause a lot of concentrated acids uh, and distillation and titrations. So it's faster and easier and more secure to use the total nitrogen uh, with our instruments. Compared to the Kjeldahl method, we also ana analyze the nitrate and the nitrate. But these should not be present in a vaccine. Most of you are working according to a specific standard or according to several standards. And, uh, and this, these standards describe how the instrumentation should be and at least some of the parameters which should be met during these analysis. So some of the instrument criteria could be combustion temperature, it could be demands regards to system suitability, calibration substances, and or detection and quantification limits, as well sample um, conservation. There's one thing you should be aware, uh, at least you who are coming from the pharmaceuticals, that USP back in May 2021 came up with a new regulation in regards to water for injection. And uh, so you have to, to be aware or at least look into these and see if you look, uh, take to see if you have um, 
anything to 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 change in your SOPs. In the new USP, there are some new control limits you have to be aware about, and these control limits are related to the container volume of your water for injection. So please have a look into the, this new standard from USP. When you prepare your standards for calibration of the instrument, and if you also do dilution uh, of your samples, you really have to look into the purity of the dilution water you're using. These, uh, you can see in the, in the manual in section 3.1, uh, which criteria we recommend for, for the dilution water for, for the standards. So, Normally, we would recommend the potassium hydrogen phthalate for standard calibration of TC or NPOC calibrations. This is at least stated in our manual, but if you work according to a specific standard, you should use the calibration sub substance which are required in the standard you are working according to. Here you also can see how we recommend to weigh out the helium hydrogen phthalate and then make a stock solution and a dilute, uh, an extra dilution down to 100 milligram per liter. All these are given in the manual. Be aware that uh, you probably should test for how long you can storage uh, your stock solution. We recommend not to storage this 1000 milligram per liter for more than two months and the diluted ones for only one week. I know a lot of customers, they do their own qualification of the storage of the standards. And here you can see the recommendations of the carbon content of the water. And this is according to the standard EN 1484. I always recommend when you create new standards, uh, you should tap all the water at the same time when you prepare your standards and your control samples. We see a lot of customer sites that the water can variate over the day. So please tap the water in one pool of the whole range of standards you're, and control samples you're preparing. When you storage the standards, please always do it in the refrigerator and protect the standards against light. One thing I see from time to time when I go to customers is they are weighing out the calibration substance in the wrong manner. They sometimes they weigh out the concentration according to the molecular weight of the substance. This is not correct. You should weigh it out according to the number of carbon in the substance you are weighing out. So always calculate it according to the molar weight of carbon. The most common use uh, calibration and control substances is parbenzokinone, it's sucrose and it's cadmium hydrogen phthalate or KHP. What I also see is these substances here. This is uh, very often used of customers who are anal uh, have samples from, from the sea, so high salt content samples. And this is also a suitable substance 
because it also contains nitrogen. So you can use the same substance for calibration of your carbon detector and your nitrogen detector. Some of you are maybe not happy to prepare your standards yourself and need some certified reference material and uh, a certificate on the standard you have or use. So then you can, for instance, buy your standards from Asus Science, who are deliver a very good product. Be aware, be aware that these standards, of course, also need to be stored on in a refrigerator, and they also have a limited shelf life. These standards, they come as default preserved with phosphoric acid, but Shimato recommends that your standards are preserved with HCl. So you, we have uh, agreed with Astro Science that they also prepare these standards with HCl. So just be aware that you, when you order, from Alto Science, you can you should order the HCL preserved standards. Some customers they clean and reuse the wires. This can be done if you do not measure low content, uh, low content carbon samples uh, with a high sense catalyst. So only when you use a normal sense catalyst and you have pretty high carbon content in your samples, we recommend you to use, reuse your wires. We have uh, an application node number 079, which tells about this issue and the importance of use pre-cleaned wires. When using when, when re reusing the wires, you also spend a lot of time to clean the wires and uh, also to assembly, screw caps, and septas. Is this really the time work? Different sample takes different preparation and storage. We recommend to ask us if you have special samples. For instance, ultra pure water for NPOC or N NVOC measurements. They should be preserved with HCl or phosphoric acid. You really have to make sure that the pH will be below two. So you don't have any microbiologic growth inside your sample. And also, so nothing will be collected into the sample from the outer environmental. It's also possible to measure sample containing partic particles. Sometimes these particles have to be filtered to do the NPOC or NVOC anal analysis. You have to keep in mind that you do not get the TUC value when you filter your sample then you are actually measure the dissolved organic carbon. It, it is also possible to measure samples like soil, and the, this can be pre-treated by adding acid to the sample, and then you use a ultra to to mix the sample as well. This can also, of course, cause some blockaging in the instrument, but uh, you can add uh, some other tubes to the system. So we have a higher diameter in the in the flow uh, in, in the flow way of uh, the instrument. So 
spatial tube from the auto sampler to the eight port valve, and again from the eight port valve to the injection injector uh, on the system. The instrument contains a sample pretreatment module. The, uh, the, the advantage of this sample pretreatment module is it take take in sample to X numbers of injections. It can dilute standards and samples up to 50 times, which means the instrument can create the multi-point calibration curve by using only one single standard solution. It can also dilute the samples up to 50 times. It prepare the sample by acidifying it and do the sparging of the sample. This sample pretreatment unit is the siring system and the eight port valve of the instrument. And uh, you have here two sample inlets on the system, one coming from the auto sampler and one from the offline port of the instrument. As I said, the instrument can make the dilution of your standards with a very high precision. The number of calibration points is up to you or the standard you are following. We see, we see a broad variety of numbers of calibration points. Within the pharmaceuticals, I often see seven points, but the European pharmacopoeia do not describe it. So it's up to you to evaluate the method. As you see here, an injection volume is stated uh, in the right corner of uh, the software. And this injection volume is automated, calculated by the algorithm in the software. But you can overrule it. So you can type in an, an injection volume you like to have for your system. So for instance, if you find that this 50 microgram per liter is too less and you would like to have a better sensitivity in your measurements, you can, for instance, use 408 microliter instead. Just type it in. As you see here, the software will give you some quality parameters of your calibration curve. It gives you the slope, the intercept, and the correlation coefficient uh, of your calibration curve. Sometimes uh, customers asking me, calling and say that the slope has become lower than it used to be. And what's, what's caused this decrease in, in the slope? Normally, this decrease in the slope is caused by that the standards has become old. They have been oxidized or they have been into the uh, environmental too long outside from the cold storage. So when the slope gets less than you normally have, you should prepare some new calibration standards. A discussion point is also, should we have our dilution water as a part of a calibration point in our calibration curve. This is really up to you, whatever you like, as zero in your calibration curve. We do not recommend anything about that. So it's up to you to do the validation of your method with or without a zero in your calibration curve. In the software, we have a function called zero shift. And this is used when we analyze very clean samples, for instance, water for injection. Um, and this is a parallel shift of the standard curve. So it goes, uh, so we shift the curve in parallel down to zero. So we do not change the slope of the curve, we just make a parallel shift. And this is to a way to take 
a way of compensate from the background of the instrument and the environmental. Um, what you also see here, we do not recommend to have, uh, or we, our recommendation is that the dilution factor should be greater than 1.25, because this will call, if you have a dilution rate lower than 1.25, it will make some problems for you here in the calibration. You can read about this in the, the manual in chapter 8.231. Since we are measuring carbon, think on the slide four we looked into, there's approximately 40 million organic substances. And all of these are, poten are potential impurities that can af affect your results. So what can affect our results? Yeah, the environmental, the flow of the carrier gas, the purity of the carrier gas, tailing, packaging of the catalyst, acid volume and the sparse time, the syringe tip, and much more. One of the environmental effects we are seeing, especially here in the COVID-19 uh, times, uh, we, where we have seen hand sanitizer being used much more than it was used before. This has caused an effect on the higher TOC results in the ultra pure water samples. Partly because the person who have taken the samples has just sanitized his or her hands but also just that a sanitizer dispenser has been placed just next to the sampling point. So if you have seen an increase in the TUC values, have a look in the factory, see if a sanitizer, hand sanitizer has been set up just next to the sampling point. Another thing is also that uh, most or civil or civil customers, it's the microbiology laboratory who are taking out the samples for the TUC analyzers. And uh, one thing they do when they take samples, they sometimes sanitize the tap before taking the sample, or even burn the tap before they take the sample. And both of these things create carbon. And this will come into the sample and we will measure it right away. From time to time, customers, they calling us say, we have no peak or our peaks are very small. It's very simple. When you have a standard TUC setup, your peak always have to come within zero and 4.5 minutes. If not, the sample, you, you should check the following things. Is the sample in the right place in the auto sampler? You should check the carrier gas flow, check for leakage in the injection, the catalyst tube in the eight port valve, and maybe some other places. It could also be that a particle it's blocking the flow path. Most of the customers who are measuring the NPOC measurements are using our function called multiple injections. The multiple injection takes in the sample to X numbers of injections. And uh, here you see there have been five injections and all these injections have been made in the same pretreatment. So the sample have been acidified and sparge. But you see here, the first peak have a bigger area than the following peaks. Why is that? This could, it could be that the sparge time have been proper set. 
So the sparse time has been too short. So the first injection here contain inorganic carbon as well, organic carbon. And the other ones here only contains the organic carbon. It means that the first peak here it's, and the second peak is excluded because they are out of the range of the standard deviation of uh, areas. Sometimes we also see double peaks, and this is especially when we have sample injection volumes above 100 microliter and when we are using the high sense catalyst. It doesn't matter that we have double peaks. This it's quite normal, and the, the instrument detects the area here, the total area of the peak. And this is just, the peak just have to be within the zero and 4.5 minutes, and then it will be detected as a peak. It has to have a specific upslope and a specific downslope to be detected as a peak. What you from time to time also can see is that the peaks are tailing. Tailing peaks indicates that there's something wrong on the system. It can indicate that the catalyst has been aged and need to be changed, or that the injection of the sample is not done properly. Either the sample is injected onto the side of the catalyst tube or it's spread out to the side of the catalyst tube. These two things will cause tailing on the peaks. When you do your startup check in, in the morning, you should always check that the injection is done directly on top of the catalyst material. You, you can see it when you open the top of the instrument. Which catalyst to choose? We have some thumb of rule uh, for the cat choose of the catalyst material. The normal sense catalysts we normally use when we have carbon content above one milligram per liter. We use the high sense catalyst material when having carbon content less than one milligram per liter, and you need to go to the high salt content kit when you have salt content higher than 3%. For customers using the total nitrogen detector, we have a special packaging for the no for that. We use the normal sense catalyst where we have ceramic fiber on top. So you can see here the, the different ways to pack the catalysts. Our TUCL and our TUCB are more or less the same instrument. But as you see here, the packaging height for TUCB is higher than for the TUCL. So for you who have both instruments, keep that in mind. The height of the packaging is different from the two instruments. And it, the reason why this are different in these two instruments is that the design of the oven of TUCL is different than, than the TUCB oven. And we would like to place the sample in the right temperature zone of the oven. So that's the reason for the difference of the packaging height. For the normal sense catalyst, we use the same packaging height for both TUCB and TUCL. And 
when you use the total nitrogen, you can see we use here again another height of the packaging. All these can be seen in the manuals. Here we see the packaging of the high salt content catalyst. The catalyst tube is much bigger uh, than the standard catalyst tube. For high salt content samples, you need also to have a B-type halogen scrubber installed uh, on your system. This is also recommended when you are measuring samples from, for instance, swimming pool water, where the content of hypochlorite is, is high. The halogen scrubbers, uh, they are protecting the detector tube for corrosion. A very crucial part in the system is the siring. It's very important to maintain this if you would like to have reproducibility on the results. One of your daily routines should be to check the status of the sirens. Dirt can cause that bubbles will stick to the surface of the Teflon tip. It will also cause that bubbles can stick to the roof inside the syringe as well. If you have leakage, leakage uh, in your syringe, you will see sample here below the membrane. And uh, if you have sample down here, you should change the tip of the syringe or change the whole syringe. Otherwise, you will have low reproducibility on both standards and samples. Make sure to get introduced to these cleaning uh, steps from your uh, local service engineer next time he's uh, visiting you because it's very crucial for your your results. It's also given in the manual in section 3.15, where you can read about installation of syringe. There's much more to learn about TUC and TUC analyzers. There's a lot of software features, there's validation, system suitability test, control samples, different application possibilities, daily care, control sample and control charts, maintenance, maintenance and consumables, history lock and history counter, quality check function, and much more. So we could spend a whole day having seminar in these things. Thank you very much for participating. Excellence in science, Shimazu.